Hello and welcome back everyone. Uh, in this short uh, video I'm going to show you how we've created a hybrid automation framework in one of my training uh, programs. Uh, this whole framework took about five to six classes, about five to six hours to put together and we've applied uh, various concepts uh, right from uh, the advanced VB scripting. We've used functions, descriptive programming, regular expressions. Uh, we've also applied descriptive programming and error handling uh, wherever needed. We have used environment variables uh, instead of global uh, and created this automation framework. Primarily uh, the application that we have taken to uh, practice on was twitter.com and uh, we've automated and created a few test cases. So it all started off uh, with uh, giving a high level plan of uh, what is it that we want to achieve, uh, what is the application, uh, what are the different automation steps and each automation step uh, as we went uh, on uh, completing them we've uh, also put in the progress of it. So primarily we started uh, with the uh, preparing the test data, the test cases and the test steps. So the test data is primarily at this uh, for these simple test cases which we have is uh, uh, one the test data ID, uh, then we have the URL, uh, the name, the login name, password and email and uh, we have then taken the test cases. So a few test cases, uh, not a large collection but once we've applied these test cases, uh, the advantage of keyword driven automation framework is primarily that uh, adding new test cases when your application is being constantly changed and developing the regression test suite uh, through QTP makes it uh, much more easier and robust. So the uh, advantage of this Excel sheet is like this is where uh, the driver script reads and understands which are the test cases to execute. So for example, uh, we are looking at login logout uh, if that functionality is working correctly. Uh, we can check to see if uh, the following, uh, the number of followers that each of us have on twitter.com uh, is that appearing correctly uh, and also how the uh, number of uh, people that you know we are following is also uh, appearing. So for this exercise I'm going to use three of these uh, test cases to execute. Now once I set these execute flags to yes in this excel spreadsheet when QTP starts to read through it, it would go through each row, uh, come to each row and see if the execute flag is yes and then it would go into the test steps and uh, look at the corresponding test cases for those test case IDs and you know continue to execute. So primarily these are the different test cases that we have and uh, the different test steps for each of the activities. So for a simple example like uh, the login logout, uh, these test cases are we open twitter.com uh, we click on a link that is basically your sign in link and we are in fact parameterizing this test case from here so the sign in is the name of the link so we've taken descriptive programming to try and identify the link on that specific web page at that time and uh, what is the name of that link. Uh, then we do a account sign in and uh, verify sign in see if we have signed in and finally we do a sign out and close Twitter. So the advantage of this framework is we have uh, multiple reusable uh, keywords and against each keyword we have created a function, a reusable function which can be called from any of our tests. So for example the click link uh, I've used one single function and if it's a sign in I pass sign in as the input parameter if it's sign out we do sign out. Similarly we have developed the other test cases to see if uh, the number of uh, people that we are following or the number of followers that we have is also getting displayed as we expect. So the message that uh, f the check web element is a function which will see if uh, the message uh, that is given here is what is appearing on the web page. Uh, and you don't have any is the starting thing. So we've used combination of descriptive programming and regular expression in the QTB script uh, to execute this. Now let's look at uh, what the script looks at like. So I primarily have three actions. Uh, it is no significant reason why I've split it into three actions but just that we're practicing to see. So we start off with creating new sheets, uh, importing the uh, data from the test cases, test steps and test data sheet uh, in that specific path. Uh, then we go into the main driver. The main driver is where the entire logic is present of what to be executed at which time. So we start off with getting the row counts for each data table which we uh, earlier imported from the Excel. Then we go through each row in the test data uh, and try and execute the different test cases. So that makes it also a data driven model in the sense that the test data here 
is at the moment we have only two test datas. When uh, we write multiple test datas, each of these test cases and the corresponding test steps which are uh, marked as yes will get executed for every row in this test data sheet and that is exactly what is reflected in our code as well. So uh, within the training program we have developed uh, everything from scratch how do we start from each point and go forward uh, then uh, you know as long as that uh, execute flag is yes and the keyword matches within the test cases and the test step sheet uh, we then execute that specific keyword. So in this case there are uh, a few keywords. Uh, if there are multiple keywords you might want to use uh, the load and run action which is a new feature within QTP version 10 and that can be very benefiting uh, especially when you have hundreds of keywords instead of uh, having reusable functions you can have reusable actions. So load and run action will actually load that action and execute that at that time. In a future video I hopefully will show you that part. So once that is done, uh, then uh, we take the results back into the Excel file, um, into the data table, and finally we do an export of those uh, of that information. Uh, the function libraries that I've created is one for basic, uh, where, uh, for example, open Twitter, and we also are checking to make sure that uh, there are no errors happening within that code. Uh, we've used uh, descriptive programming and regular expressions uh, liberally wherever we need it. Uh, common functions like click link, uh, click web element, uh, close twitter, check web element uh, and so on are created. We've also used recovery scenarios where uh, we have unwanted pop-ups uh, at an unexpected state. Uh, we've handled them through different recovery scenario files. Uh, and then here is another function library where we have created the reusable functions for uh, each uh, key step. So for example account sign in these are the following steps that are involved. Uh, we have used uh, repositories collection uh, to load repositories dynamically. So this is a very advanced uh, state that we have reached uh, but we have started from the scratch and applied all the learnings that happened in the training program to this exercise. So that way we've continued to create uh, different uh, uh, functions to execute each and every keyword. So this is a synopsis of uh, how the code looks and uh, finally the test directory which is there uh, this is how it looks. So we have uh, environment variables, recovery scenarios, reusable functions, say shared object repository, the automation plan from which uh, the entire data is uh, read and then finally these final script that we generated. So we went from each version to the other and slowly reached this current state. Uh, now before I do a run, I uh, just want to show you how the results will get populated uh, once this test completes. So what I'm doing is I am taking that Excel path, uh, whatever was there earlier, and uh, to that I'm saying AR, automation results underscore, that specific test data ID. So we would see results like AR underscore TD001.XL is created. Uh, and one new Excel sheet for each uh, test data. So you can go in and see which uh, test data did uh, things fail for. Now let's do a quick run um, and while the run is happening I want to make sure that I have my Excel closed because QTP is going to use this and uh, I'm going to pause the recording while that run happens.